Hey everyone, welcome down to the shop again. I'm Bill Duran and today I will be continuing our molding and casting series. Of course, if you haven't checked them out already, we've got a whole bunch of videos. In fact, we have a whole playlist you can go see with all of our molding and casting videos. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about tinting your urethane resin. There are a whole bunch of different additives you can put into your urethane resin for a whole bunch of different uh, outcomes or effects that you want for your castings. Today we'll be talking about tinting, but if you want a rundown of a bunch of different additives, go check out what Smooth On has to offer. There's a lot of really great stuff. So in most of our urethane casting videos, you'll see us tinting the resin uh, any number of colors. Usually it's with black tint for our space guns. This is because the SmoothCast 300 that I like to use cures to a bright white finish and for most applications bright white is not what I want out of it so I add some color to it. With the space gun example I like to tint those gray so that if the paint job chips off you don't see a bright white blemish sticking through you see some gray not as offensive. Of course, there are many, many other reasons to tint your resin. For example, you could tint it the final color that you want your piece to be, and then you don't have to do a base coat of color to match it. Of course, the main thing to consider here is that the tint that you put in, and for most of these examples, we'll be using So Strong Tint from Smooth On. This tint is a really dark, deep color, but the resin that you're mixing it into will cure white in the example of SmoothCast 300. So even though the mixed up resin looks like that really deep, rich color, it's gonna get mixed with a whole lot of white and you'll end up with a much lighter color. So with those space guns, even though the resin looks black, when you pour it and let it cure, it turns nice and gray instead of that dark black. Another thing to note about your tints you can get the squeezy bottles which I like that make it really easy to pour in your little droplets of the tint. Smooth On offers a sample pack with all of the colors that they offer and this is a great way to kind of get to know which ones might be your favorite. I will note though that the containers do a pretty terrible job of keeping that stuff in the container and they will likely spew out or one of them in my case the red it'll spew out everywhere in your container of tints and additives, and it will look like a crime scene. So just bear in mind that the uh, the tints are pretty messy and they'll get everywhere. Gloves uh, help a lot because these things will stain anything they touch. Another example here, you can see this really dark red looking uncured res resin as we mix it together. Then you pour it in the mold and wait for it to cure. And over the next five to 10 minutes or so, it turns totally solid and a lovely shade of pink or fuchsia even. Of course, there are different resins that you can use to get a different outcome with the color. For example, SmoothCast 325 is called a color match resin and it cures to a transparent amber, is what they call it, which means it doesn't turn white when it cures. So the tint that you put in there will turn much closer to its actual color than the counterpart, which is diluted with white. You can see these two examples side by side. They both had the same amount of tint added to them, but one of them was done in SmoothCast 300, the pink one, and the other one was done with SmoothCast 325, the red one. A resin like 325 is really great if you're gonna be casting things like gems or anything that you want to pop out that final color. A thing to note though is it does cure slightly transparent. So if there are any bubbles in the resin, and there will be unless you use a pressure pot, you'll see those bubbles. So if this is the sort of thing you plan on doing a whole lot, then you'll wanna start looking into using a pressure pot. Another good example here is our Nuka Cola bottle. This was done with SmoothCast 325 and we mixed in a little bit of brown tint and uh, then we put it in the pressure pot to shrink all of the bubbles. So you'll see there are no bubbles in the casting and what you end up with is a really cool semi-transparent dark brown casting. Now, when you are applying your tint, I like to pre-mix that tint into the side B. 
This stuff is like food coloring. It's really, really thick. And you wanna spend as much time as you can mixing it into your resin before you put in the side A when the clock starts ticking. This pre-mixing gives you some extra time to integrate all of that thick tint into your resin, which is really great because if you don't mix it in really, really well, then you'll get colorful streaks in your cured pieces. And nobody likes streaks. Now, if you're gonna be doing a whole lot of casting in a day, let's say, and you want all of those pieces to be the same color, I highly recommend pouring out all of the resin that you'll be using for that session into a larger container. Then you can pre-tint all of your side B and then pour that out into your smaller mixing cups for each batch that you cast. This way, every single batch that you mix out will have the same amount of tint in it and they will all cure the exact same color. In fact, if you're gonna commit to it and do a whole gallon jug of resin, then you can just put the tint right into that side B gallon jug, mix it up, and then everything that comes out of that batch of resin will have the same exact color. Of course, you're committed at that point. If you want your resin to be any other color, then you're gonna have to get another jug of the stuff. So there you go. That's the rundown on tints for your urethane resin. Like I said, this is exactly the sort of thing we like to use for when we're doing a whole bunch of space guns or if we have anything that we want to be any particular color. Like I said earlier, we've got that whole playlist of molding and casting videos. If you guys have dipped your toe into that world and wanna show off the stuff that you've done, let me know all about it over on Twitter, that's at Chinbeard, or just give me a poke down in the comments. Thank you guys again so much for watching our videos. I can't say how grateful I am because they haven't invented the words yet, but it's really fantastic. We've seen a ton of growth over here on YouTube in the last few months, and you guys are to thank for it. Of course, hopefully you guys are learning a whole bunch of things and you're getting a lot of good value from these videos. And if you are getting a bunch of value from our videos, please consider giving a little bit back our way if you can, whether that's just sharing our videos, which helps us out a real lot, or throwing us a couple bucks over on our Patreon page. Both ways can be super helpful for us so that we can provide you guys with even more prop and costume making video content. Thanks again for hanging out with me this week, you guys. Uh, next week, we'll probably do more molding and casting stuff, so look forward to that. And as always, go out there and make some stuff. How about it, huh?